to Rockin' Country Radio, today's hottest country and more. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Rockin' Country Radio. I am your host for the evening, Dawn Mack, and it is so good to be here with you on this Friday Eve. Around here at the station, we always refer to Thursdays as Friday Eves because, I don't know, it just almost makes it sound a little bit better. Um, But I know the weekend is upon everyone, and uh, it's been a big summer for a lot of people. You've been out and about, going to festivals, seeing a lot of your favorite artists, and uh, it's just been a great time. And uh, I tell you, can can you believe we're into almost mid-August? I mean, we're almost winding down to Labor Day. I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking, you know, a few short weeks from now, it's going to be Labor Day. Um, and then fall and, and uh, football season. And I'm like, whoa, slow down. But um, I'm so excited for our show tonight. I, I'm very excited about our guest. And I want to welcome everyone in. If you are a first-time listener, oh, you have chosen the right night to tune in, let me tell you, because our guest tonight you're going to absolutely love, and he is really moving and shaking in the world of country music. And before I bring him on, I want to give you a little background on who he is, um, in case you don't already know. Um, He is a country music newcomer who is making his way into the hearts of music fans of all ages. Um, He was named Country Music Association's Who's New to Watch artist in 2014, and he is becoming one of country's hottest new stars, rocking stages across the nation. And every time he picks up his guitar and starts to sing, you know this guy not only has the roots for authentic country music, but the heart to back it up. He um, released his debut single last year entitled Blow These Speakers Out, and Country Radio really, really grew to love him. They embraced it, and he rapidly earned the respect from radio and industry executives, um, and they actually have referred to him as the next Brad Paisley. Wow. Wow. What a what a compliment. And um, at only 19 years old, folks, believe it or not, um, it, he's already proven that nothing will stop him. And um, he's been on the road performing every chance he can get, especially this summer. He has been exceptionally busy. And he shared the stage with Rodney Atkins, Joe Nichols, and the Oak Ridge Boys, just to name a few. And he's quickly become a crowd favorite because of his music his warmth, his charm, and his all-American values. His follow-up release is all it. Excuse me, ain't my fault, which I absolutely love. It's a great song, and um, many, many people love him, especially his fan club called the Rowdies. So, without further ado, I am very excited to welcome to our show tonight, Mitch Gowdy. Hello. Howdy. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And you? I hope you're doing well. Oh, I'm doing great. I just got a cup of coffee, came down from the studio, and uh, it's it's great. I heard it's a Friday Eve, so I'm, yeah. I'm really enjoying myself. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Well, you know what? It can't go wrong if you've got a cup of coffee in your hand. Normally I do during the show, but I just I'm drinking iced tea, sweet iced tea tonight. So, um, but it is it is an honor to have you with us. It's a pleasure. I um, absolutely love and adore you and your music and. Um, you're just a great artist, and as CMT said, you are definitely one to watch, um, not only just this year, but also in, in uh, the months to come. I think 2015 is going to be a huge year for you, if this year is any indication. Um, so congratulations on the success of your early success and also the success of your latest single, Ain't My Fault. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been uh, a crazy, crazy 2014. I I really had no idea the type of uh, things I was getting into. I, When I made my first album, I solely made it because I was playing a lot of coffee shops and bars and um, little venues, and my fans kept telling me, hey, we want to listen to your music. So I decided to make my first album and just put a few of the songs. I, I write a ton of songs, and I put 12 of my favorites that I wrote on an album called Wild and just released it. And uh, it ended up in the right hands, and things started to really take off, and I started performing more, and uh, I guess now I'm just holding on and just enjoying it. I mean, this year has been the the biggest year that's uh, ever happened to me in my music career. I've been doing this for just a little while, but um, I'm I'm enjoying it, and I'm also just so excited for what's coming up, too. 
Uh, yeah, you've got a lot of great big plans coming up. I mean, for someone who, l let's just say, you know, you, you weren't really t taking it like uber seriously to begin with. You were just kind of doing it and, and because you enjoyed it, obviously. And it's just grown from that into now this phenomenon where you are becoming – a fan favorite in the world of country music, and a, I mean, P, you really make it a name for yourself. So, um, yeah, hold it, you better hold on is, is the right way to put it, um, because you're definitely in for the ride of your life, I do believe. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm blown away by the support, and uh, one of the things, one of the coolest things that's happened, you touched on it a little bit before, was uh, the creation of the Rowdies, or uh, my fan group. So they've always called me Rowdy Gowdy. Even when I was younger, they called me Rowdy Gowdy. And uh, there's definitely a reason for that, but I can't tell you that until you come to my show. And I uh. think it will explain itself. Um, <laughs> I tend to go a little crazy on stage. It's just the place I'm... I'm crazy in person, crazy basically all the time, but you get a new level of it, a new level of wild when I step on that stage. And so uh, country radio started referring to me as Rowdy Mitch Gowdy, and uh, it just kept sticking and sticking, and now it's come to the point where people even just ca are calling me alone Rowdy. So I'm um, <laughs> really enjoying that, and then all of a sudden the fans really started to pour in, and they, they started really enjoying the music, which is what it's all about for me. And um, it, they started, it was actually fan created. Um, we had people offer suggestions of starting a fan group that does something different. And um, they call up radio stations. We hang out every Thursday night. I'm actually headed to that after this to hang out on GowdiesRowdies.com uh, mm -hmm. to hang out with all of the fans. And we just talk about things that happen and they get an inside look of everything that's happening because there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. You know, you, you see mm -hmm. the the song moving up the charts and you see a lot of shows, but there's a lot more to it. Um, so you really get to be a part of the inside action of everything that's going on in the, in the rowdy world is what we call it. And so they've, they've definitely been so influential and I'm, I'm just really enjoying that. And it's so cool to go to the shows. We have rowdy t-shirts, ones that say hashtag rowdy on it. And uh, it's so cool to show up to a show and have people singing your music. I mean, uh, I'm only 19 years old and to think that, people know my songs through and through it just blows me away i mean obviously that's the dream you want mm -hmm. people to do that but y yeah. you don't expect it and uh the fact that you show up to a show and people are already wearing your t-shirts and singing your songs and uh it's it's just blowing me away and i'm i'm feel beyond blessed and just like like you said holding on <laughs> <laughs> well you know i'm glad you answered that that was going to be one of my questions is, is where did rowdy come from but obviously you know your last name being gowdy it, it makes sense but i think that's awesome and major mad props to you for taking time out of your busy schedule because i know how hectic it is to be on the road touring especially when you're in the midst of making an album on top of everything and taking time out to spend with your fans in such a personal way you know and just meeting them and interacting and and talking about everyday life or everything under the sun and um and it really gives them a great glimpse into you know who you are as an artist which i think is awesome because um as you said, there is much that goes on behind the scenes that you don't always see and you don't always hear on the record, you know, or in the music, mm -hmm. and you don't always see it on stage. So it's really cool that, that you're getting, you know, on that level with your fans. Oh, for sure. And, you know, it also it helps me, too. You know, people say, you know, you're doing you're doing your fans, you know, you're you're helping your fans out and you're doing them a favor. No, 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 no. That's not the way I really view it. Uh I view it the opposite way. You know, they're the ones out there calling up the radio stations. They're the ones showing up to the show, showing their best friends the song, you know, uh, posting posters all over the place. I mean, they're the ones that are, are doing it, and it's just it's something so cool for me to talk about the songs. And um, we hang out on a website, and there's a webcam, and there's also a live chat room kind of um, and they'll ask me questions. And so it can be it can be anything from, like, do you like mac and cheese to uh, why did you write My Girl's Hand, which is one of the songs that uh, really did well on the record. And that type of stuff means a lot, and I also get feedback from them because I'm not only making music just for myself, and, yeah, it's a, it's me writing songs, and I'm also – I play a lot of the instruments, and I, I'm a producer on my album. 
Um, so I'm very involved in the music, and a lot of it is for yourself. You write for yourself, and you write what you truly feel. But also, it's about my fans and you know where they're at. And so I get to talk with them and say, you know, which song meant the most to you? Which uh, which song speaks to you most? Which what do you want to hear more of? What do you want to you know even what do you want to hear less of? I'm okay with that. And um, hearing what they truly like and catering or having that in mind when I'm making the music completely changes it because it becomes a community thing instead of just this is my music, this is the way it is, to this is about us. This is mm-hmm. a community that we're creating. And uh, so when they when they hear the songs, they're getting to hear a perspective that they might have had even a say in the creative aspect of the music so i think that's that's super cool and i I really don't know if that's uh common or uncommon but you'll find out they call me rowdy gowdy for a reason i don't really care uh i kind of do what i (laughs) want and i really i really do care about my fans and they're they're the ones you know i it's so cool to hear like a song like stained glass on my album can speak to so many people because of some of the things i was going through uh if you haven't checked out that song there is a video on youtube uh, go check it out. Uh, I was going through a really tough time, and I was thinking um, that God couldn't use me in any way. And um, I had a change of thought when I passed the stained glass window, and you'll see um, what that means. But I've had people comment to me saying that song completely changed their viewpoint of something. And uh, I think that's what music's about. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's about changing the people it's about speaking to people on a different level and that could be blow these speakers out talking about skinny dipping i mean that's real yeah. life. that's yeah. real uh 17 year old in iowa that's where i grew up uh that's that's what happens and so you know speaking to that emotion also along with a heartbreak my girl's hand or um something christian which is uh stained glass so yeah mm-hmm. i just gave Major props to the Rowdies. I know I've talked about them a lot, but, man, I'm just so thankful for them. Well, you know, I just have to commend you because, you know, country music in general, artists in country music are so appreciative of the fans. And now with social media being what it is, fans really have a voice in, you know, taking their favorite artists and pitching them to their local radio stations and to Sirius XM and, and all these different mediums out there where their favorites can be heard. And fans are playing a huge role in an artist's career, in country music especially today. And, you know, I, I just love the fact that you, like so many artists in this genre, recognize that without your fans, you don't have a career. I mean, the fans really are what make it. They're the ones that, you know, buy the memorabilia. They buy the music. They come to your shows, you know, and they're so supportive and loyal to a fault almost. Um, you know, and, and it's just phenomenal that you not only recognize that, but you really try to give back to them. Um, and and I think your perspective is correct. I, you know, it's um, it really is all a matter of how you look at it. But when you're... When you're making music, I mean, the whole, for me personally, when I hear a song that I can identify with, um, you know, you naturally assume that the artist has some attachment to the song. But um, when you can write a song that really speaks to people, which music is a universal language as it is, you know you've done something, you know, because you're not just writing it for yourself, as you said. It's it's really all about those who are going to hear it. And, um, and so... I think that that is absolutely phenomenal, and um, and you know I, I have not seen your show, and I can't wait till you get to North Carolina or somewhere close to North Carolina so I can get out to see your show, because when I'm envisioning Rowdy, in my mind I'm thinking you said you just got to come to my show to see what I do on stage. I'm kind of thinking back to those days of Garth Brooks because he got rowdy on stage. You know, he really did some mm-hmm. crazy things and just out there. And, you know, and that is what made people, I think, one facet to him that people just absolutely fell in love with. And so when you said, you know, I get rowdy on stage and, and I'm called rowdy for a reason, that kind of popped in my mind. Um, and so that's why I look forward to seeing what you do on stage because obviously the stage is the place where you are the most comfortable and you just kind of let loose and just have fun. And I'm sure the fans just absolutely eat it up. Oh man, it's uh, that comparison. It, it happens a lot, Garth Brooks, um, and that's that blows me away. One because it, that's big, 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 big shoes to fill. But uh, and I just even that same you know sentence is 
crazy the fact you put the same name with that but uh i i do get that comparison a lot and it's not necessarily that we do necessarily the same thing on stage but it i would definitely consider myself an entertainer Mm -hmm. uh just like he is and uh i i grew up listening to him he was incredible on stage and it it's all about i don't know for me it's huge about the live show you know, delivering that emotion. People come to be changed. People come to enjoy a moment with you. And we just wrote a new song that's going to be out on the record. And it's called Turn Up the Cowbell. And uh, I know it sounds really quirky and weird, and it totally is. Uh, it was meant to be that way. I was, I sat down to write this song, and I said, I need a song that will just make the crowd go crazy, something people mm-hmm. can just have fun to. And uh, I had this crazy idea about a cowbell. Um, and I wrote the song, and my management, I showed it to my management right away, and they thought I'd completely gone off the deep end, but that's <laughs> typical when I show them a song. Uh, and then they they said they didn't necessarily, they didn't know if that was the right direction. And so I went, I kind of went a little bit against it, and I went home and I made a demo myself, which is when you put guitars and drums to it, just in my own little recording thing, and um, I came back, and then all of a sudden it clicked, and he said, well, why don't you try it live? And we tried it live down opening up for CMA Fest. Um, and the hook of the chorus is, can't you tell these folks come out of their shell when someone yells, turn up the cowbell? Well, <laughs> I, you know, I, I did that a few times, and on the very last chorus, I, can't, I went, could someone yell, stopped, and the place was packed, and people just screamed, Turn up the cowbell. Oh wow! And that was like, oh man, that was just such a moment because I, that's what that's what I live for. That type of energy, and I'm already going insane on stage. But my, my show was meant for you to come and have an amazing time too. I mean, it's not about sitting and listening to the song. And there's songs that you do, you sit and listen to. But it's also you're a part of the song. You mm-hmm. you know you're an instrument in the song, even in your own way. You clap it along, you sing it along, you dance it along. Even if you're the type of person that likes to just sit and watch someone go crazy on stage, that's what the Rowdy Gowdy show is about. So uh, I, yeah, I can't wait to make it out to around the Carolina area, uh, and we will bring a Rowdy show that way. I would I would love that because I remember I grew up an 80s girl. I grew up a, a rock girl, and, and the first country show I ever went to was Garth Brooks, and Trisha Yearwood just had her first single out, and she opened for him. I'd never been to a show, and I was expecting – typical stereotypical that he was going to be sitting on a bar stool strumming a guitar and man i couldn't believe it i ended up seeing him four times so i can only imagine (laughs) what the energy of your show brings um in the here and now for your fans and really i think that's that's one of the magical parts about seeing a live show um is is all that energy that you know the artist has and how it it gives off and the, it feed, the crowd feeds off of that and it really does ignite a venue like nothing else can and I love shows that are full of energy like that it's just so entertaining and uh, it's just a, a well of a good time so um, well you are currently um, working on your brand new album and uh, how is that coming along oh it's so much fun and uh, this time I've taken on a few more roles uh, this is my my, this will be the second album that I'm releasing, and uh, I'm, I'm a little more old. I'm a little – that sounded bad. I'm a little older. More old makes me sound like I'm like, really old. <laughs> I'm 19. My goodness. Uh, but you no, are not it's, old. Trust I'm me. a little older. I'm a little more experienced, <laughs> which really comes in handy in the studio. And this time I'm definitely more involved in the creative aspect of it. Um, I'm the I'm a – playing a lot of the instruments on it and i'm also producing the project so um as far as getting my hands in the music and making it exactly the way uh we need it to be this is just a dream come true the fact that i'm having the opportunity to do this and getting to help mold the project too um and as far as the material goes i could not be more happy with it and i i know obviously that's the thing to say as an artist you know you expect them to say this is the best project in the world you know but it truly is. It's exactly what 
I want to say right now. And uh, it's it's fun, it's rowdy, and it's also got some very touching moments, too. I mean, you're going to really enjoy the album. I hope you guys check it out. Uh, it's going to be out, hopefully, uh, this fall, and there will be a set date. So definitely tune into my Twitter. I tweet a lot. Um, tune into my Facebook, my Instagram, and you'll find out more information about that. Um, but man, I'm just I'm so excited. We're in the final stages of it. We've got the songs picked out. We've got everything. We're already recording it, and so I'm going to be taking another break tonight to talk with the rowdies, and then I'm going to head back up and probably red eye it all throughout the night so that we can just get this music out there. It, it, it it's insane how. Uh, how you want people to hear the music so quick like it's it's driving me insane so i'm just working <laughs> on it unrelentlessly <laughs> well and i have to say you know you were saying every artist says you know this is the best album ever but really and truly every time you put an album out you should be saying that because every album needs to get better and better and better to as part of honing your craft as an artist and, and continuing to put out great music so never never ever say oh you know it, it because it, it should be and i think that the fans are going to find that this is going to be an amazing project and speaking of amazing your video to ain't my thought talk a little bit about <laughs> the making of that because that turned out so well and um i mean it was it was great really well that uh i gotta give props to my team for that you know, if I if I were good with a video camera, I would have done it myself. But uh, I know the importance of making people who do what they do best and putting them in the right shoes. And so I, I give props to my management for that. I give props to the video crew. Uh, they did an awesome job. And really what just happened was is they, they told me, you need to go out there and be yourself, see how it goes. And for some reason – Anytime you let me go, I end up going a little insane, a little rowdy, like they always say. And uh, <laughs> there were, if you check out the video, it's called Ain't My Fault by Mitch Gowdy. It's on YouTube right now. It had over 10,000 views in the first week, which blew me away. Just absolutely blew me away. Um, and there's drift cars in it. And they, they thought I would be afraid of that. But I grew up, uh, and I went every Saturday night to the races. There was a local racetrack, half-mile dirt track. And uh, I watched Hobby Socks, Modifieds, I, it was loud cars, and I was always there. Um, so it was like almost bringing me back in time. You know, they were like, have you ever been around these crazy drifting cars or throwing themselves sideways on cement and stuff? And, oh, I wasn't scared at all. I said, when are you going to let me drive? <laughs> and uh, my management said, no, don't let him drive. My goodness, he'll go insane. But I did end up uh, hanging out the window of one of the cars. And uh, after a while, they said, okay, you're getting, you're hanging out the window a little too far. You're starting to make us nervous. And uh, so they, you'll, you'll see that in the in the video but it was such a cool experience and um we did it down in bowling green kentucky so we were around your neck of the woods kind of yeah okay. uh and it was it was just such a cool experience and the people in it were great and i know even one of the rowdies showed up uh, we had a contest to help um if you wanted to be in a music video if you were a member of the fan club um there were some things that you could do to get into the video so one of the rowdies was actually there and got to meet up with me and we got to hang out a little bit beforehand uh, and so that was definitely cool to have that element in the video because it's not just um, a bunch of actors and stuff. You know, there were some real fans in that video. So I definitely think that was one of the coolest parts of it. Well, it's a great, great video indeed. And, you know, it, you've got to live up to the name Rowdy. So I'm glad that you were able to get in the car. I'm thinking about that, you know, and, and haven't seen the video. I think that's it's a neat backstory, by the way. Thank you for sharing that. But, and that was the other thing I was going to ask you. I meant to ask you this a second ago and I got diverted here, but your fans, when they show up at a show, do they introduce themselves by their Twitter handle, their name? And what is it like for you when you get to finally meet them in person? <laughs> it's really cool. And, uh, I like to say most of the time I notice them before they they even know I notice them. Is that right? I think, uh, right. and I really believe that's true for the most part. Um, it was really cool down at CMA Fest that we had thousands of people come through the booth. Uh, um, we ended up being one of the centerfolds in the guide and the CMA guide, and that was that was huge for the booth. And um, so many people came up and chatted with me, and that was a first experience. I mean, I'm from a small town in Iowa. I mean, both my parents are teachers. 
you know, to think that people were coming to say, hey, I've listened to your music and I love your music and, you know, could you sign the CD, all this stuff. I mean, that just blew, blew me away. But it was so cool. There was a line for autographs and stuff, and it was so cool to look in the line, and I could tell who they were. And most of the time I even know their name. But I I let them introduce themselves, and then I kind of laugh, and I'll tell them something that they said on Twitter. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you actually, you know, I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, I pay attention to that stuff. So Mm -hmm. it's really cool. It's a... it really is. It's a it's a community. Like I say, you know, we're yeah. we're a bunch of friends, and that's it's weird to say that, but it's also cool to say that, you know. And well, and um, I've not. Go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say it's quite amazing that you have such you know a keen mind in that way that that you can actually remember bits and pieces about each person that you've interacted with on social media, and when you see them in person, you know you you already know them per se, and you know when you think about how many people you've interacted with since this kind of blew up, you know, and has become as big as it has, that is so amazing and. I can't imagine what that must mean to your fans to know that not only do you acknowledge them, but you know who they are before they can tell you, which is rare, mm-hmm. really, Mitch. I mean, that's a, that's a very unique quality. And, of course, that is what is going to make your fans love you all the more because they do truly feel connected to you because of the willingness that you put forth to really get to know them on that level, you know, and yeah, not absolutely. just as your fans, you know. There is only one thing. If I could have a superpower that would help <laughs> solve one of my flaws, I'll tell you what it would be. Well, sure thing. I am terrible with names, but I am getting <laughs> so much better about that. Uh, so I could tell you face. I could tell you what they said. I could tell you, you know, where they live. For some reason, names are hard for me. But I, uh, ever since I've started with the Rowdy Group, and uh, I've had, I've even taken some memory things. I think it's just. A teenage boy thing, really. You just forget dumb stuff. But no, uh, so now you know the superpower I wish I had. (laughs) If I could remember absolutely everyone's name, I would. And most of the time, I would say most of the time, I'm really good about it. But uh, uh, that's something I'm I'm trying to kick some butt on. But no, I I do. I think this Twitter thing helps big time because normally when somebody comes up, I'm like, oh, Sarah, you know, you're. What's your Twitter handle name? And they'll tell me that. I'll be like, oh, yeah, you sent me that picture, stuff like that. So if you're not on my Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, definitely go check it out. Uh, I read all the comments, and I try and comment back as much as possible. Obviously, uh, man, we are just so busy, but we, I do try my absolute best. And if anything, I do read them. So I have read absolutely every comment and every direct message that I've gotten. Um, so know that you are being listened to for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I have to ask you one last thing before I let you go, and this is a fun question, but I read that you love food and some of your favorite comfort foods because you are a country boy Mm. at heart. Kraft, mac and and cheese, McDonald's, Hostess cupcakes, and Swiss cake rolls. I mean, um, you know, and to think, I thought that was just kind of more centralized here in the South. (laughs) But man, those are um those are indeed comfort foods that we all partake in here quite a bit as well. Oh yeah, I mean that that's my ultimate dream, and uh, it's weird to say, but you know my dream is not to be rich and you know huge and all this stuff. You know that's that's obviously something that would be nice, but my ultimate goal is just to you know have enough that if, when I'm hungry for a Hostess cupcake, I don't have to really worry about it. I can go down to a convenience store and get one. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a well, hostess I, cupcakes, man. Those are just those are my thing. I love them. And also, I'm looking for an endorsement from McDonald's because I think it would be cool to have a uh, rowdy Mick Gowdy. There you sandwich. go. Gosh, I it, think it, it's okay. genius. I mean, it, well, it, it has is. a flow to it. It really does. So, and that's what you should so McDonald's, if you're marketing. listening, Ronald. Hey, Mm -hmm. give me a call. Let's make a rowdy Mick (laughs) Gowdy. Well, okay, if if you could do that, what would you want it to consist of? Oh well, I have a specialty. Um, This is something the brothers and I we we had a bunch of friends in high school, and we used to go bowling. We used to go to McDonald's. That was our thing, and then we would uh, go out and have like a bonfire, and you take a McDouble and a McChicken. And you put the McChicken patty in between the two hamburger patties, and then you get a small fry, and you put a few fries in it too. And then you close up the sandwich, and bam, there you go. You're Rowdy McGowdy. And it is so (laughs) 
bad for you and so good and so awesome. So, so see, be, if you get be the chance, 19, and it's only three dollars, man, that's cheap. Yeah, look, it, being nineteen, you can do that. When you get my age, McDonald's, you have to steer clear of. But I have to ask you this because one of mm-hmm. the things that I've always loved about McDonald's is taking your French fries and dipping them in chocolate shake. I don't know why, but there's something about that whole sweet and salty thing going on. And this was before kettle corn mm-hmm. became all the rage. But, man, that is the best combination. If you had not tried it, you should. It's just, I don't oh, know what it is. Oh, I means. have. Trust me. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one of my weaknesses is those darn filet o fishes. Woo. Oh. I don't know why I love them so much, but I just uh, do. You yeah. know. Are you not a filet o fish <laughs> fan? I'm not, no, but um, but I know plenty of people who are. So, um, I'm just a plain old cheeseburger gal. You know, I don't. I occasional Big Mac, but like I said, as I've gotten older, kind of try to stay away from all fast food in general, and uh, I try to eat a little bit better. And but yeah, I still, oh I'm, no, I'm don't still do a that. For those French fries. I'm a sucker for those French fries every once in a while, and it, they're the best fries. I don't care what anybody says. Sorry, Burger King and the rest, but to me, McDonald's has the best French fries going, and Nobody has been able to top them. I don't. I don't know what it is, but it's just. It's nope. Just something that's about my. It. <laughs> you know, that's my plan. When when I get the right woman, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take her out on a date to McDonald's because <laughs> it's just it's the greatest place on earth. So that's uh, just, well, that's just you know that's the part of who you are too. So um, that's right. well, I just I, I am a big mac and cheese girl. So I mean, growing up in the south, that was that was a a comfort food Crap. on Sundays and. Well, uh, yes, Kraft, but uh, my mom has always made a killer homemade mac and cheese casserole that is to die for. And uh, But, yeah, Kraft mac and cheese is, you know, I would take that over Velveeta shells any day, you know. Oh, man, for sure. <laughs> for sure, and it's something I can cook, you know. I'm a, I've am been having to learn how to cook a lot of things on my own because I can't eat all out all the time. And, uh, yeah. Man, yeah. that's something. It's It's just quick and easy i mean i messed it up a few times which all you have to do is read the box but yeah. i forgot to do that i'm one of those guys i refuse to read directions you know i always oh, get a product boy. i'm like uh, oh well, i know how this okay. is but because i'm a pioneer at heart so uh-huh. well, uh, normally i figure right. it out after messing it up six times and i finally read the directions and it works so oh, you know that it, you do you do things your own way and it always will work out you're right you know that's how it goes <laughs> Well, I exactly. tell you, this is this is so cool, and um, you are a lot of fun, and I cannot wait for the album to drop in the fall. It it's just around the corner, as a matter of fact, and mm-hmm. so um, and your early music, if that's any indication, this album is going to be great, and so I know your fans are excited because I am, and uh, it's it's going to be great, and I really can't wait to see what's going to happen for you in 2015. It's going to be a big year for sure. Well, thank you so much for having me on, and I can't wait to bring a show out to the Carolinas, and uh, I'll see you at the show. We'll have to hang out a little bit, maybe uh, be great. get and one of the Rowdy McGowdies, and we'll eat one together. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, enjoy going to the convenience store for your hostess cupcakes now, because uh, it won't be too much longer. You won't be able to go out in public like that without somebody just coming up to you and, you know, and, hey, Rowdy, and, you know, and, uh, you know you'll I, be recognized. I actually, I actually had one of those moments down in, <laughs> down in Nashville at CMA Fest. I had this ingenious idea idea there's a mcdonald's about from where we were at there was a mcdonald's about a block away and i'm uh-huh. so used to just going you know i mean there's no issue with that let me just go down to mcdonald's and i started walking that way and i kept getting stopped and stopped and stopped and then finally you know my management grabbed on me and they're like you just you can't go out there i was like well then how the heck am i supposed to get my mcdouble and he's like well we'll send well, somebody i was like what the heck credit. what kind I mean, of to your defense, I mean, in in Nashville of all places, you know, where it's chocked full of country music stars everywhere you turn, you you don't really think that that's a place. I mean, even though it's during CMA Fest, you really don't think that that's a place that you'd have a problem going to to eat somewhere or going to you know do whatever. Um, because that's just so commonplace in Nashville. I mean, the people that live there are so used to that. Um, mm-hmm. But it is interesting because the fans who come to CMA don't live there, so they're probably oh, starstruck all week, you know, <laughs> and having a great time. Oh yeah, time. It, it's crazy. And actually we were we were riding around in a limo which was uh which was super cool. But uh they asked me where I wanted to go out to eat and I said, Well can we pull through McDonalds with this thing? <laughs> can we just and we actually the did. <laughs> yes, I should I should have taken a picture of it to prove it. I literally I told the limo driver to go to McDonalds and we pulled through McDonalds. And uh, that was that. So that if, that if that doesn't tell you about my personality, 
Uh, that's what uh, that's what was up. I didn't want anything different, you know. I still wanted the that same exact so things, but yeah, it's a. Uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and, it was. And those uh, people at McDonald's were probably like, "Oh my gosh, there's some big star coming through at the drive-through, ordering the McRowdy Gowdy or whatever." You know, I mean, really seriously, <laughs> it's just so hilarious. Well, Mitch, this has been a blast, and um, I am going to let you go because I know you've got some work to do this evening, and you got to go meet your fans here shortly. But thank you so very much for your time. It has been so much fun and we look forward to having you back we'll have you back um when the album comes out we'll we'll play a few cuts and just have you on to talk about the songs and um and take some fan calls too if you'd like so that would be awesome 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 thank you so much for having me on thank you it's been amazing and take care and we wish you all the best thank you very much you have a good rest of the night thank you too Ah, oh, what a nice young man, and I say young, 19 years, but man, he is so well-spoken and so beyond his years, but he's a phenomenal artist, and uh, we want to say a huge thank you to Mitch Gowdy for being our special guest this evening, and before we wrap tonight, we are going to play his latest single, Ain't My Fault, but before we get to that, I want to um, toss out where you can find him on social media. You can go to MitchGowdy.com and uh, check out his website, and it's just chock full of information, all of his upcoming uh, dates and um you know, his videos and this, that, and the other. I mean, he's just got so much going on. And as a matter of fact, I was going to see uh, coming up um, this weekend, if you're in Rockwell, Iowa, you want to catch him at the Rockwell Chamber of Commerce Kicking and Chicken, and he'll be performing there. And his next date will be over in Illinois at Carthage at the Lake Hill Winery. So he is he's all over the place, so catch him if you can. And uh, he is a phenomenal artist, and he is definitely one that you, like CMA says, one to watch. And uh, not just in 2014, but far beyond. And also on Twitter, he is a Mitch Gowdy, and on Facebook, the same. And so, believe me, if you love his music and you don't own it, please go to iTunes, buy it, support him. Um, your support not only means everything to him, but it enables him to keep doing what he loves, which is putting out great music for all of you. And um, nice young man, great man, great career ahead so we look forward to having him back on at a later date to talk about that album when it drops i'm sure it's going to be awesome so um we are going to go ahead and close the show tonight with his latest single ain't my fault and again want to say a huge thank you to mitch gowdy for being our special guest many thanks to all of you as well and um, we normally are not here on Fridays, but we will here, be here tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back for another special edition of um, our Rock and Country Radio show with another great indie artist. So you definitely want to tune in for that. We'll be back on Saturday night for a Highway Underground. We'll be featuring Mitch's song and much, much more uh, that you'll be hearing from from your favorite indie artist. And if you get a chance, go over and check out our website, rockandcountryradio.com. You'll see all the great guests that we have coming, and it's just chocked full of information that um, you can um, find out about these artists and the music that we play and we represent here. So that is going to wrap it up for tonight, but be back here tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. Take care, all. Have a wonderful night. We'll close with Mitch Gowdy, Ain't My Fault. Hey, come on, girl. Strawberry smile that makes me want to taste those lips. Silky sweat sundress that makes me want to get over there and rock your hips. I can't concentrate, always run late. Let me set this trade, ain't my fault. Help us, honey. Going 
crazy, helpless honey. Honey, yeah, you can blame it on me, blame it on you, blame it on whatever you want to, but it ain't my fault. Swing sundress And make them want to rock your hips Check out Rockin' Country Radio on the web Find us at rockincountryradio.com On Twitter at rockin' underscore C-T-R-Y And on Facebook at Rockin' Country Radio. 